Hey, Hi, Pa. How you doing? Hi, Spike. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, you got lights. You cleaned up your shop. You got a yeah, camera. Yeah, All the junk's out of the way. <laughs> what are you trying to do now? So? Um, well, this is a new uh, YouTube show called FPV Reviews. And uh, this is our first episode we're filming, and I'm glad you could make it. Well, yeah. Okay. And uh, my lovely wife, Mariana, is uh, filming for us today. And the review we're reviewing this uh, plane right here, the Skywalker. This is a really neat airplane. It's uh, specially made for FPV. It's one of the very few planes that are made for it. And it can really carry a lot of weight. When I first started flying this plane, I noticed a couple of things were wrong with it. It needed a lot of uh, up trim in the elevator um, to get it to fly right and stay in the air. It seemed like it was real nose heavy. So when I got it back after the first flight, I measured the incidence. And it actually had a little negative incidence in the, in the horizontal stabilizer. So what I've done, you can probably see right here, I've made a shim here for, this, uh, for the horizontal stabilizer. And it shims it up approximately three sixteenths of an inch. And that provides about two and a half uh, degrees or so of incidence uh, for the wing. Also, the center of gravity up here that was uh, original uh, with the instructions was right under the wing spar, right about here. And the best place I've found for the center of gravity for good stall characteristics is right here at the back edge of the wing pocket. And what I've done is to put a little screw underneath there on each side. That way when I'm in the field, I can pull it up like this and balance the plane. And I can feel real easily where that balance point is. And just to double check every time before I fly. There's a lot of other modifications that people do. Um, including beefing up the, the tail and the wing. Uh, a lot of people seem to be afraid that that the uh, wings will fall off or the tail will uh, have a flutter in it. Uh, but I haven't really found that to be the case. Um, of course, I'm not doing any extreme flying with the thing. I have done loops and rolls and whatnot. I found it won't really fly inverted hardly at all. It just wants to fall out of the sky. Um, but that's pretty much uh, a characteristic of a, a thick airfoil with an undercambered uh, wing. And it does provide a lot of lift. It can carry an immense amount of weight for its size. And I found it to be a really good airplane for FPV. So, Pa, I know you've had relatively little experience flying model airplanes. And you were actually able to solo this plane. Um, what was your experience? Well, I did find this airplane easy to fly. Um, that's very true. I've had very little flying experience, only with a couple of airplanes. And this airplane I found very easy to fly. I was able to take off and uh, fly around and land all in one piece. Yeah. Um, they say a good landing is one you can walk away from. and You always do that with a model airplane, but <laughs> in this case the plane survived too. That's a good thing. The plane was none the worse for wear when, after I flew it. Yeah. So that's a good airplane. Yeah, we have some video we'll splice into that too. Yeah. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment that's in this airplane. I'm going to take you through it step by step and show you all the parts I've used. Now this is a, a successful uh, long-range airplane. I've flown this out uh, to about a kilometer and a half so far and it seems to have the potential to do much more. It has a long-range system on it which means it's got 433 megahertz UHF uh, antennas and receiver on board. It's got an easy UHF uh, module for the transmitter and it's also uh, has a high gain antenna on the ground and a video uh, 800 uh, milliwatt video transmitter sending video back so it should in theory uh, be able to go for quite a few miles out of course you'd want to have a spotter and, and be safe and it's also equipped with a, uh, a tracker uh, an automatic antenna tracker so we'll go into that a little bit later as well. But I'd like to take and walk you through the airplane and show you some of the equipment that's inside it. 
So here in the nose of the Skywalker, there's a lot of room in here. There's room for big batteries. Right now we have in there a 5,000 milliamp hour Hyperion pack and for the flight power and a 1300 milliamp uh, pack for the video system. Also installed is a FY31 uh, AP autopilot and a Telefly OSD. The Telefly OSD is made by MyFlyDream.com and that goes with the uh, automatic antenna tracker. So they're, they go together. I found it to be a good OSD. It has the information you need, pretty much things that you don't need it doesn't have. And um, also this camera uh, that I'm using is a 720 line camera from uh, readymaderc.com, rmrc.com. And it's provided a really good picture, has a good low light, and is um, pretty much sealed up. So I think it could probably get some, uh, go through some clouds or get some weather on it without being damaged. And I've been really happy with the color and everything about it. Also installed in the in the plane is a, an immersion RC eight channel diversity receiver with two outputs. There's two antennas and I've got extensions for both of them. I got those extensions at readymaderc.com. They're SMA uh, connectors and they're really good quality. And I've been told by some friends I have in radio that that they're um, a lot better than the regular coaxial cable uh, like RG58 that you can get really cheaply. They cost a little bit more but I really believe they're worth it. The antennas have mounted one vertical and one horizontal up here on the tail and also the GPS uh, from the OSD for the navigation is mounted up on this little platform I've made. Just gives it a clear view to the sky. It allows the tail to be removed without effect, without moving the GPS. Out on the end of the wingtip here, mounted the video transmitter. This is a Racewood Red Label uh, video transmitter. It's 800 milliwatts. I put a heat sink on it just to make sure it stays nice and cool. I've also left an area for air to come in and an area on the top here for the air to exit. And I've made it so that on the top of the wing so I can push the antenna down like this, fold it down during transport. And when I'm ready for flight I can tilt it back up. On the other wing tip I've mounted the GPS for the autopilot system. The FY31AP comes with its own GPS. And although they can share the same GPS, I like the redundancy of having two of them. So I've mounted that other GPS out on the wing tip here. These wing tips are nice and thick and there's uh, plenty of room there to mount. Also, you've noticed I have a bolt-on wing, and uh, this is a modification too. The aircraft came with uh, rubber bands and dowels in the side, it used to go right about here. Uh, I never used those. I saw those, I didn't really like them, and I've made a, a bolt-on wing setup. The bolts that I have in the wing here, of course, come out the other side. They come out the bottom of the wing, and they go into, I've glued in these pieces of plywood, uh, this is door skin plywood and I've just threaded it with a quarter inch by 20 tap and put a balsa framework around this opening. Epoxy that all into the place so it's nice and strong. And the, I just set the wing down and put the screws in and it's held firmly in place. Also inside here is a Castle Creations 10 amp BEC and that's uh, to keep the ESC's BEC from being overloaded. They usually don't have enough power to power all the servos that you want on an FPV airplane, especially when you're adding things like pan tilt camera pods for larger cameras. And this is the speed control. This is a 40 amp E-Flight speed control. I've modified it only by disconnecting the BEC that comes from it using the signal wire and ground only and also by uh, putting these heat sinks on them. These heat sinks I just get at Radio Shack and that keeps the ESC nice and cool. I've been told by friends in the electronics industry that if you can keep one of these pulse width modulators uh, cooler they'll actually run more efficiently. So I'm sure they're worth their weight. 
Also, this is an E-Flight Park 480 motor. They make two versions of it. This is the 1020 kV version. And of course, I'm running it on the three cell Hyperion pack. And I'm using what I found to be probably a little underpropped, but moderate um, as far as loading the motor. But plenty of adequate power for the Skywalker. This is a master air screw propeller. And it's um, this is a 10 by 7 uh, three blader. The neat thing about the Skywalker is there's plenty of room for cameras, and people build all sorts of camera pods and extra things to go on them. In this case, I built a camera pod for a GoPro camera for a, and a pan servo that's built in. So I just take the canopy off, set the pod in place. Hold it down with one screw, just like that. And then I take this FPV camera that's back here, and I, I just remove it. I can pull this up like that. This fits in place, just like that. Gets held in with a piece of Velcro. Then the GoPro camera would go right here, if I had one. I'm waiting for it to arrive in the mail. And then uh, you just uh, turn the system on and it can pan. Of course this camera would be used for navigation, the GoPro would be used to film in HD. The Skywalker has one drawback, it doesn't come with landing gear. A lot of people just put on their own landing gear. In this case I bought a set of landing gear and just put some wheels on it and I uh, have it temporarily affixed to the bottom of the fuselage. A lot of people make their own out of music wire and that's fine too. I also noticed the tail of my Skywalker was getting soiled and uh, worn off plainly and so I installed this little uh, tail skid I had uh, off of another foam model on, on the tail. It used to be on the wing uh, but it, it keeps the tail from uh, getting worn away uh, during landing and takeoff. For control, I'm using this older Futaba 1024 radio. With it, ha I'm using it because it has PPM outputs, and I'm using it mated to this uh, to the UHF Easy UHF transmitter uh, for long range. And it's got some nice features on it, such as uh, one button fail safe and bind, and a high low power setting. I've got it mounted on there at this angle so that the antenna is almost uh, vertical for long-range flying. Also, I've modified the what I'm using currently for a pan servo. I've modified it with this uh, wheel, this servo arm, to give me a little smoother uh, pan for the pan server so it's not so jerky. And I've mounted this piece of foam on the back side of it also uh, to keep the, the jacks and wires uh, from getting damaged going in and out of the radio and to just have something soft to set the radio on in the field. Uh, you'll notice that it has another port in the back uh, for a head tracker which you can add later and that works independently of the Futaba radio system. And it gets plugged in directly, transmitted directly uh, through the Easy UHF system. I also noticed for the Skywalker a little bit of premix from the aileron to the rudder uh, keeps the, the Skywalker in a coordinated turn. With these barn door style ailerons, there is some adverse yaw in this airplane um, created by the ailerons. So that's why it's necessary to mix the rudder in with it. Flying model airplanes can be a lot of fun. My own father found it one of his greatest pleasures. With today's digital cameras and the modern electronics available for our airplanes, uh, flying FPV makes it more fun than it ever was. Uh, here at FPV Reviews, we're hoping we can help you to enjoy the sport as much as we do. I'm really happy you mentioned that about Grandpa. My grandfather was uh, into the development of um, avionics for uh, for full-scale aircraft and he would have if he were still around today He really would have liked seeing uh, some of the equipment and the instrumentation we're flying around on the model airplanes Yeah, we'd like to thank BEVRC 
Airplanes.com for making a really good FPV airplane that everybody can buy online and set up however they like it and use. Uh, we also want to thank uh, especially Ready Made RC, uh, Tim there and the staff uh, for getting us our internet orders on time, getting everything right, making sure we had what we need, and giving good uh, support. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Charles at MyFlyDream.com uh, for his help in this project. And we want to thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe and let the manufacturers know what other products you'd like to see on our show.